No, but going back to the the enlisted officer thing, man, I just I think it would work actually. I think there would be some growing pains as as there is with everything, but I think that you could bring everybody in Air Force now. What would you do with the service academies? Goodbye. <laughs> Save millions upon millions of dollars and then take some of that money and put it into enlisted pay. Oh, that's a good point. So as I was talking about in terms of the, you know, the, the gap between enlisted and officers has, has shrunk throughout the years. Um, one thing that has not been revisited is the enlisted pay. And I know that uh, Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force Bass and I believe some of the other service chiefs or service senior enlisted were working on this as well as the uh, the new SEAC and CZ was working on it before him. But revisiting the pay charts for enlisted folks. Yeah, we could get more oomph behind this if everybody came in enlisted in the front door. A, that process already exists. And then the process to like switch over to like warrant officer or officer, however you want to look at it, already exists. And ROTC programs already exist. All these, all these things that if you wanted to use any of these things, which are fantastic, but to, to do this other service academy thing, and I get it that traditionally back in the day, and there's a lot of family histories with a few folks and all this other stuff, I get it that it'd be hard, um, but it's not worth the money. And you're going to have a hard time changing my mind that it, that it's worth the money that the government spends on those places. Like, it's not like people come out of the, the Air Force Academy as pilots. Like, they don't run flight school. They don't do, like, the, oh, we create pilots. Do you, though? You know, like, well, most of, their recru- most of their recruitment for pilots comes out of the service academies, or at least right. the Air Force Academy. Yeah. But, like, that, that's just known as the, the, the program, right? If you just get rid of the program, then those same people, instead of spending time in college and wasting their time and all these other things, they just start serving their country right away. And then there's a process to get there anyway. At four to six years, you can switch over to a warrant and you can start flying. Get through flight school, boom. Then you're a flyer. Like it's just, and we get something out of it. And we already know these people and they're vetted and all this other, you know, like, and it's way cheaper, like a lot cheaper. Yeah, it is cheaper. Um, I mean, you never know. They may end up going that route. I mean, with with West Point removing, you know, duty, honor, and country from their their mission statement that's, kind that's of right. thing. So we just removed West Point. Bye. Like, I don't know what you guys are thinking removing that stuff. I, it is a weird thing, and I'd love to hear the rationale behind it because uh, I have yet to see any kind of statement get put out about that. And it's a weird thing when when you start talking about. Um, serving your country and uh, i.e. country like i said they removed duty honor and country from it like that's said, weird they just seem really really strange when you're supposed to espouse service and duty and honor and country and integrity and service and all that kind of stuff did it's they a- replace it with anything because like to, to be fair i only saw like the now that now comes the other side of trent right like i only saw like the the headlines of some of these things i didn't do a lot of research on it did they replace mm. it with something else? Not that I saw. I did not see anything uh, in terms of what they're replacing with. And like I said, I haven't seen a statement either. Um, so maybe it's clickbaity. I, I'm not sure, but man, yeah. that is blown up. And it's it's one of those kind of decisions where it's like the dive removal of die school, where you're like, <sighs> I don't, I don't know. And again, like I always I always try and give. Air Force and military leadership the benefit of the doubt because I, I I fully acknowledge I'm a they now, right? Oh, yeah. So and and there are for sure decisions I have made and will make that people are like, dude, what the fuck's this dude doing? <laughs> you know, so I, I get it, which is why I try and give people the benefit of the doubt. But when you when you see things like this, you're like, I man, I'm I'm trying here. I'm trying to get on your side and give you the benefit of the doubt, but it's tough. And you know, when you have people like Colonel uh, Nathan R. Jessup that, that, you know, stand for needing people on the wall and, you know, duty, honor, courage, country, service, and that kind of stuff. Um, you know, you, we should pay attention to what Colonel Jessup says. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, 
It's 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 weird. You don't even know who I'm talking about, do you? I don't. Which one's Jessup? <laughs> oh man, it's uh, you can't handle the truth. Oh no, we don't need more guys like that. <laughs> T- to uh, me, when when decisions like that are made, though, like sometimes, like like with the dive thing, I'm like, you don't. And, and this is this is me as an enlisted guy that's like way too close to the problem or spent a lot of my career way too close to that problem. It's like you don't even know what you're asking. Like, like you're so far removed from the problem set and you've never lived in that problem set because you've ne- you didn't start at the bottom. You have no idea how this works. Um, <clears throat> that you don't even know what you're asking for. Like it's not the removal of dive that, that killed me. It was the, the total lack of understanding of how long it would take and, and how many things are in place and what it affects and doesn't affect. And like you're not – also you don't have a beret and, and no one with a beret is telling you that this is a great idea. So it's just like I don't understand – like making decisions that you don't understand. No, it's, it's, it's tough. And I, and I hope I get a chance or we get a chance to, to ask the question and, and get a, a, a no kidding answer. But when you have spent, um, uh, you know, better part of, I mean, since, since our inception, right, we've been going to dive school, like pretty early, you know, when we start talking about some of the legends that we have had on, Yep. Right. Your, your Mike Lampies, your, your Corins, you know, the, who all went to dive school and stuff like that. When you start talking about something that's been a part of, of our career fields for so long. And, and I don't mean that it's the sacred cow that we shouldn't get rid of. That's not what I'm saying. Right. Because if there's a reason for it and it makes sense, then, okay, we should, we should divest from it. But when you start talking about actual operational events and i don't mean combat yes there have been combat dives and that kind of stuff but the majority of us that have dove have actually done body recovery yeah that is body and equipment recovery because a lot of folks aren't qualified for that and you're not going to send out civilian divers or you're going to try not to send out civilian divers to recover you know when we start talking about the cv-22 off of okinawa yeah you know we start talking about the cave the the Thai cave, yes, there were civilian divers there. There were also Thai seals. There were also PJs, controllers, SR from the three twentieth. They were diving, like that a big part of that mission. So we've done it in a humanitarian. We've done it operationally. We've done it in combat, although a few. And then and 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 our focus has always been in the Middle East recently. Yeah, and now. Everything that you're telling us, everything in the, the, all the way up to POTUS is saying we need to pivot to the Pacific and start focusing on that. And which last time I checked and looked at a globe, there's a whole lot of water that, that <laughs> drove the SR dive requirement. Like the old South T didn't have a dive requirement, right? At least not like out the pipeline, the new, all of the stuff coming from the Pentagon is what drove the SR 100% dive requirement and the pipeline. A few other things, but like that was the justification is like if you're moving into this new theater of operation that's mostly water, like it, it's one of those things. And I, and also like the Air Force Spec Ops guys have a, like a unique access to everything. Like mm-hmm. we're, we're like the guys that are always there that are never there. You know what I mean? Like that you never hear about, but they're, they're always there. So you always have that dive capability, whether it's combat or humanitarian or, or recovery. Um, it's always there. It's always available, you know, no matter what, whether your your ODAs or, or some of these other teams out there have that capability or not. Like, we're, yeah, that's what we are. We're, and we're a small maneuver force as well, like those guys out in Okinawa. Like, they can go. Like, it's not deploying, like, an entire battalion or, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, definitely a small, these, small team small, and small footprint. Yeah. Right? And a lot of times they're self-sustaining. And – but it's just – it's a weird thing. So, like I said, I try and give benefit of the doubt. To leadership when they make those kind of decisions but i think you you make a good point they they make a lot of these decisions in a vacuum they also make a lot of those decisions based off of what their staff is telling them you know and if their staff if there's not somebody on there who is a funny hat wearer or somebody who is an expert in in said said mission set or career field and i'm not i'm not even just talking about dive i'm talking about anything anything yeah. then you're ma- and you don't even bother to pick up the phone and, and ask like it's problematic. Yeah. Well, they might say the same thing 
about me saying we need to get rid of the service academies, right? Which to me yeah. looks like just a sacred cow. Like that's all it looks like. And a whole bunch of money, not to mention the amount of active duty officers it takes to run the academy. Like we have people on active duty running a school um, for for reasons. I don't know. And, uh, you know, there's a bunch of listed folks out there, too. And I'm not saying there's no goodness that comes out of the academies. I'm just saying it doesn't outweigh the, the amount of time, resources, and effort. And I think streamlining it, and I, I, I do think also, and this is just me, like, it seems way more American to have people come in at the bottom and work their way up. Like this, the, the, the class system where you show up as a, a lieutenant and you know you have no understanding of what it's like to be enlisted. I don't, I don't think it's very American. And it's a waste of time. Very American. 